Hi there and welcome back to Planet Property. I thought for today's video uh, I would essentially try and kill two birds with one stone. So I wanted to film something today but it's also been on my to-do list for a little while now to sort of thoroughly go through the new RICS rules of conduct that were brought in recently, make notes, make flashcards on them and just start drilling those into my brain over the old ones so I thought let's learn together and then you know maybe someone can use this as a revision aid in the future when I say someone potentially myself um, so for long-term subscribers you may recognize my little setup I am currently downstairs rather than in my office which is upstairs um, when I was revising for the APC earlier on this year I would do my work during the day um like my job work in my office upstairs and then i'd have my dinner and i'd come down here and i'd do a few hours of revision on the table that we have by the kitchen uh just to like break it up a little bit so that i wasn't sat in the same room for 14 hours a day but you know this is oh apparently the setup is volatile um yes but it's the nature of the apc and it so, yep, I thought we'd go through it together. Um, it's Sunday afternoon, so I do have the F1 on, and I do have the washing machine on, so there's some background noise, because this is a small house, but welcome to real life. Again, I'm procrastinating. You don't come to my channel to listen to my commentary on Formula One, so let's, let's just get on with things. Okay, so it looks as though this is replacing not only the old rules of conduct for members and firms but also the global ethical standards so that certainly makes it a lot easier in terms of remembering things because previously I think there was 15 rules for members is it seven or nine rules no 15 rules for firms seven or nine rules for members plus global ethical standards plus oh something else um, Yeah, there was there was a lot of sort of key things that had to be remembered. So sort of amalgamating it into one document certainly makes the revision easier. And in terms of like the RICS processes, I think that's actually a lot simpler just to have one document to refer to as this is our rules of conduct. This is what we expect from everyone, members, firms, international. The washing machine is going to spin at a really annoying point now. But whilst these rules have been published in October of 2021, they don't actually come into force until the 1st of February 2022. So if, like me, you're going to be submitting in the spring 22 window, I would imagine that they would ask if you know of the old rules because you will have done a lot of your structured training under the old rules but obviously you will need to know the new rules of conduct because they will come in prior to final assessment um but again i'm gonna sort of speak to some people about that my my um counselor and some other people who are doing it and try and work i think it might be worth referencing both of them in the written submission Oh, that's interesting. They've given case studies for this. It's 12 case studies. I mean, this is all available on the RICS website and I'm going to leave a link to it down below just in case anyone doesn't know where, where it is. Washing machine spinning. It's a beautiful little overtake by Kimi Raikkonen. He is an exceptional driver. It's a real shame that he's going to be leaving at the end of the season. I'm going to have to name this sort of like Rick's revision and F1 chats or something. <laughs>
Right, we're getting into the crux of the rules. How are we going to do this? We'll write in black pen and then highlight the rules and then pick out any specific key text with a blue pen. Very important to have your note making strategy prior to undertaking said note making. So, rule one. Members and firms must be honest, act with integrity and comply with their professional obligations, including obligations to RICS. I mean, it's, it's quite straightforward, isn't it? You know, it's an amalgamation of several of the previous rules and that makes a lot more sense because I think there were a, there was quite a lot of overlap with a lot of the previous rules. But I don't want this to become a, this is what the previous ones were, this is what this is, because there might be people watching this who only need to learn the new ones. So, right, rule one, members and firms must be honest, act with integrity and comply with their professional obligations, including obligations to RICS. So let's get that written down. Do you know what's really nice actually? They've just got the rule and then they've got loads of example behaviours underneath it. So there's not loads of just unnecessary supporting text of this includes when the RICS emails you and asks for information, you must comply, obviously. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I'm just sort of a bit of a goody two shoes with this kind of thing, but when I was reading notes on the old rules for members and firms, etc., and it would have things like that in the supporting text, I was like, who's not sending information to the RICS when they ask for it? But it's just, it's funny, it's just the kind of thing that I think a lot of people don't realise that people do. But yes, tangent, rule one, just be compliant and like, don't be an arsehole. But don't answer that if they ask you what rule one is in your ear. I am a terrible teacher, I would never be able to be a proper teacher. Make a flashcard. Well, just write it out. Repetition, repetition, repeti repetition is the um, best way to remember. It's what my old music teacher used to teach me, and it is just, it is. It's the only way to really get things drilled into your head, just, just repeat it. <laughs> I wouldn't normally advise revising with something like the F1 or just like any kind of TV or proper distraction on in the background because like I said, I'm getting distracted right now by David Beckham and Lando Norris pitting because he's got a puncture. Um, but this is just like quite light, just making some notes, getting my brain in gear, thinking about the new rules. When it comes to actual revision, for me, I'll have to either be in silence or like some lo-fi or classical music or something, couldn't have TV on. And I would recommend that as well. Rule two, members and firms must maintain their professional competence and ensure that services are provided by competent individuals who have the necessary expertise. So again, that's just an amalgamation of some of the previous rules from the rules for members and firms about ensuring that you are competent to undertake any work that you do, um, you're keeping up to date on your CPD record and all those kinds of things. Just, you know, make sure that you are able to do the job that you're instructed to do. So.
Yeah, so the um, supporting examples talk about CPD requirements, etc. So, yep, that makes sense. I have to say, this is a delight to look at. Rule three, members and firms must provide good quality and diligent service. That's it, you know. This is literally replacing about 30 rules or something that came under different names and brackets and now there's just five. This is a revision dream. I mean, I know where it came from, but sort of who who created the rules, if there was consultation on it or anything. I mean, I'm sure if you drilled down into it and had a proper look, there'd be a way to find out, but... I'm just, I'm always really intrigued with specific nuances of wording and... Using the word good quality and diligent service, just interesting. Who, who? Who put that one in there? Oh, I didn't make my flashcards for rule two. Right. Rule four. Members and firms must treat each other with respect and encourage diversity and inclusion. Ooh, diversity and inclusion. That's exciting. I mean, the RICS is famously incredibly, what would the word be, undiverse? Is that a word? I think on International Women's Day earlier this year, they published a statistic that only 13% of members of the RICS are women. That means that 87% are men, assuming that, that, that assumes that there are no, there's no one who identifies as, as non-binary or neither or something. So let's not put it at that high, let's say like 85%, 85% men in 2021, that's just, ridiculous, insane, disgusting, all the words. <laughs> We're just over here trying to change the world, girls, aren't we? machine's finished and the F1's over so we finally got a little bit of quiet for the last rule. <laughs> rule five. Members and firms must act in the public interest, take responsibility for their actions and act to prevent harm and maintain public confidence in the profession. Again, these are These all seem to me to be sort of reworded amalgamations of the previous rules which makes sense because you know it's it, you don't want to drastically change the goalposts what the rules were also the previous rules did kind of make sense you know <laughs> treat others with respect make sure you're competent to do your job um take responsibility for what you're doing and try and encourage trust within the profession so it does make sense so let's just get this one written in the notebook and then the flashcard.
mean, they all start with members and firms, so that's easy. <laughs> members and firms must. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we go through them from the top? See if I can remember them. Yeah, I'm, I won't be able to now, but... So there's an appendix as well, which is professional obligations to the RICS. And that's kind of, yeah, that's, that's kind of what um, the previous um, rules were about cooperation and your CPD and all that kind of stuff. So that's fine. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. Okay, so rule one. Members and firm, I'm totally cheating, I'm looking at my notes, but I'm not going to have to regurgitate this tomorrow, so that's fine. This stage it's just repetition. So rule one, members and firms must be honest, act with integrity and comply with their professional obligations, including obligations to RICS. Rule two, members and firms must, oh, no, nope, that messed it up already. Rule two, members and firms must maintain their professional competence and ensure that services are provided by competent individuals who have the necessary expertise. Rule three, members and firms must provide good quality and diligent services. Rule four, members and firms must treat others with respect and encourage diversity and inclusion. And rule five, Members and firms must act in the public interest, take responsibility for their actions and act to prevent harm and maintain public confidence in the profession. Done. Mic drop. Flashcard drop. Let's tidy these up. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that someone has gained something from my random Sunday afternoon waffling and just regurgitating what is written on the RICS website like I say I'll link the page down below with the update to the rules of conduct um and yeah I will probably come back to this myself when I'm revising so hopefully it's helping someone else with their revision but like I say this doesn't come in to action until February 22 so for now I'm still gonna have to learn the previous rules for members and firms and professional international ethical standards so it's not going anywhere for this session I don't think but yeah thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time